My name is Madeleine Vallon, and I'm the founder of the Australian School of Holistic Counseling. Our mission is to help the next generation of heart-centered, driven people thrive as therapists, coaches, and counselors. In this five-part series, we allow students and graduates of our college to share their life journey of changing the world, one courageous step at a time. I hope that their stories inspire you to follow your dreams and remind you that there's always an opportunity to grow, no matter what life throws at you. If you're a heart-centered and driven individual with a calling to work and thrive as a therapist, coach, or counselor, please visit our website at www.ashc.com.au. Enjoy the show. Today, we're going to speak to Benjamin John, or Ben, and he's got a really inspiring story and a great vision. So hello, Ben. G'day, guys. How you going? Thank you for having me on. It's really good to have you here. Um, I've obviously been following you for a while because you've been part of the college for a little while. How long have you been with us now? Oh, it's got to be two years, I reckon, coming up to two years, I'd say mm. now. Mm. Yeah, You're coming up to yeah. the end of end of your your journey with us. I am. Yeah, great. <laughs> it's been a really exciting one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So tell me, who's who's Ben? It's an interesting question, isn't it? It's something I've actually done on my um, done on my podcast. But when I, it was funny when I when I came to this, who is this Ben? Who's Benjamin John? Yeah, it's, it was one of those questions. I was sort of I had to sit with for a little while. It's like it's not something you sort of come up with every day, or it's something you really discuss, or even bring into your awareness. You know, to to put out to someone else, who am I? So look to me, what I what I came up with, and you know what I say resonates with me the most is I'm Benjamin John's someone who's dedicated, hardworking, someone who's willing to be open and will, has a willingness to um, explore different possibilities, explore different perspectives. Um, someone who's able to potentially challenge some of my own beliefs, my own structure, my own um, awareness of what is going on in my life to be able to have the experiences I want in life, right? So to me, I kind of resonate, I suppose, with a bit of an explorer, a little bit of a rebel, um, and and someone who's a little bit willing to buck the system um, and not necessarily follow all the all the structures um, to be able to be who it is I that I want to be. So Benjamin John, if in a nutshell, I suppose, is someone who wants to create their own life and explores possibilities to, to do that. Mm. Mm. And you've got a really fairly, I mean, I think it's an interesting story. I mean, you've you've been through a lot you've had your own personal personal self-development journey or inner journey do you want to tell us a little bit about yours most definitely yeah Mm -hmm. um so where do I start I'll start look I'll start look I had an upbringing that was um you know not unlike a lot of others out there you know I had alcoholic father um you know and there was I suppose a little bit of you know, domestic violence, all that sort of stuff, you know, there was certainly love within the family, but, you know, it was very, it was very separate, you know, and it was kind of um, in the sense that there wasn't a lot of connection. Um, People within my family found it, you know, hard to connect in a lot of ways. But beyond that, I'd say my childhood really wasn't that bad, you know, in a sense that I don't think it really scarred me. You know, there were certainly things that happened, you know, separations with the family and bits and pieces. But beyond that, when I joined the when I got to a point of being a teenager and exploring and funnily enough, like that's where I've come back to as an adult is really to that teenage aspect of exploring who I am, what I want to be, what's this world around me, all that sort of stuff. But when I, when I, when I got to a place in my life where I kind of realized that if I continued on the path that I was, um, I was either going to end up in jail or um, potentially dead or, you know, you know, in some way, shape or form, maybe, addicted to something either alcohol or drugs um i got to a point in my life where you know there's a lot of things that i would say happened for a reason and led me down the direction i did but if i scale that back it was really i I started taking um chances and opportunities to what was put in front of me so one morning i woke up after having a car accident at my auntie's after an alcoholic night yappa 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 the story goes on and I heard the first thing I heard on the radio was, you know, 13, 19, 01, Army the Edge. And I went, you know, it'd been in my awareness. My dad had spoken about other things. And I went, that's it, I'm doing it, right? At the time, I was 
heavily on marijuana and other things. And everyone kind of laughed at me, if I'm honest, about me joining the army. They're like, yeah, right, righto, mate. Um, yeah, good on you, Benjamin. Um, so from then, what I did was I, I, I completely flipped, really. I just really focused on what I did is I took all that energy that was outwardly and focused it on that in that one direction of joining the army. So I, you know, I gave up everything. I, you know, I became this fitness freak that was running everywhere. Like, but beyond that, I got to a point where within the army, um, I really started challenging like that one, first and foremost, they started challenging who I was as a person, right? They started challenging all my structures, all my beliefs. And they really, with for lack of a better word, they broke me down to a point of not knowing who I was or what I wanted to be so they could rebuild me to who they wanted me to be right now at the time I think I was 18 I um quite I was went in there quite naive I went in there with a you know like a lot of people join things I went in there with an intention I wanted to help people right I wanted to wanted to help my country wanted to help my family wanted to help be you know put myself on the line um to help those around me funnily enough which is what I did. Um, now, when I went through that training, I went in there with really no idea what the army was all about, or any of that sort of stuff. And you, you learn quite quickly um, where to fit, fit within the, their structures that are there. But what I, what I found out about myself, more importantly, was how much I was able to adapt, how much I was able to expand, how much I was able to challenge myself both physically and mentally to a point that, you know, I, I did special forces training. I did all sorts of other stuff within the army, you know, and this kid, this has come from a kid who, you know, people laughing about joining, you know, even joining the army to someone that was kind of ridiculed, I suppose, within the defense structure, because I did have a bit of a spiritual belief. I had a, I had that, you know, do unto others type of mentality and, you know, loving humans and humanity and then, believed in the word love which was almost you know like don't do that kind of thing within the military structure um but now looking back as a 40 year old i really what i focus on is how much all that stuff there was a lot of trauma like there was accidents that happened there was you know i was in a helicopter accident um there was a lot of stuff that challenged my beliefs in the third world country with all the, all the trauma that you see over there, all the, you know, the, the, um, the militia, the things that was happening over there, all, all the type of loss of life and, you know, all the things that were happening in the third world country versus me, you know, being that role of the defense, supposedly the defender or someone who's out there to help these people. While those experiences, there was, a, there was a lot of trauma in, you know, the helicopter accidents, all these other little, inc these one on one incidents that I could cause, say, caused um, really a 20 year spiral of mental health for me um, was it really challenged who I was and what I believed about humanity, first and foremost, like that going through those personal experiences of trauma were huge and you know, certainly, you know, led to the the point of me having the diagnosis of having PTSD and all the rest of it. Um, and look, I'm not going to lie, there was a massive struggle. Like I, I went, after getting back from East, I went, I served in East Timor and after getting back from there, I went on a massive downward spiral. Like everything I believed to be true about humanity or I thought to be true just was almost crushed beneath me, <laughs> you know, now, when I look back at that child, and I'll say child because I was very young, when I look back at that child who was overseas, I can I can see why I experienced it the way I did, right? And why I was challenged in such a way. But to look at it from the for you know, look from where I am now, from a place of safety, from a place of security, from a place of, you know, having some understanding of who I am, really made me aware of. The moments of trauma I was experiencing wasn't necessarily my truth, wasn't necessarily the truth that I see today, wasn't necessarily the truth of my experience at the time, which in that trauma, in that, you know, place of wanting to kill myself pretty much uh, you know, at times um, and 
again, I was abusing alcohol, I was abusing drugs, I was in fire clubs, I was doing all these sorts of things that just um, kept me in there. I suppose it kept me in a little bit of that chaos, really. It, it, it kept me always heightened, always in that state of awareness uh, and that real high state of, um, if I can liken it to anything, it'll be like an athlete in their, in their prime. And you're running on that 24 seven day in, day out on this heightened state of, um, it, it was, it was an insecurity, I would say, not the, than a directed heightened state of, of flow and moving forward. Cause they, I think they're very two different places. You can still have that heightened state of flow, that heightened state of whatever, but in that heightened state of what I would say, insecurity and not feeling safe, what I know now, my body was just in this chemical of, you know, this cocktail chemical of craziness and, you know, hormones and, and you know, all these type of chemicals are running through my body to keep me in that state of stress response, right? Or a state of um, fear, if I'm honest. So that whole journey, I eventually got to a point of, I had to make a choice again, right, in my life where my wife pretty much told me that she, like over the years, she would tell me, oh, you know, you, you can't, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, blah, 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 blah. But when she came to a point in, my, in our relationship, she said, look, I can't do this anymore. And she made a decision for herself. Well, even as twisted and, and caught up in my own stuff as I was, I didn't know how to, ch I couldn't challenge that, right? She wasn't making a decision because of me, because I was doing something wrong because of, she would decide to make a choice for herself. So I came to another point in my life where another road in my life where I decided I had to make a choice, right? I was either going to lose my family or I had to start challenging some of the things I believed to be true. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that I believed to be my experience and that were governing who I was, which led me, led me on the exploration of self, you know, self-discovery first and foremost and self-development which also led me to the Australian School of Holistic Counselling and thank goodness it did. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah and uh, you know like it, you telling that story I mean this I haven't been in any of those situations that that you've been but I can certainly recognize parts of that inside myself that this you, I can hear your drive there's this need to move forward this need this passion for life for doing something and if we don't take take that and actually honor that part of ourselves it can be used for good and bad you know we have that ability to make something great out of that drive and we have the ability for it to pretty much destroy us and you know i'm so grateful that you made the choice to create something amazing and remarkable from it because it is that force <clears throat> that drive that we have um, you can't stop that. It's something that's no. inside of us. It, it, it's, it's, and we can't, we can't suppress it. We can't get rid of it. We can't say it's not, it's actually really valuable, but we got, just have to learn to master that part of ourselves, which kind of sounds like what you're, what you're doing. I mean, it's an ongoing quest, but you're certainly yeah. well on your way to, to do that. Yeah, that's definitely definitely what it is for me, you know. I, I, and I'm I'm a true believer that this journey of life, or whatever you want to call it, like it, it's it's an ever ever evolving thing, right? And there's, mm. you know, I, 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 if when I came into self development, I, I kind of laughed at my friends, and I had this, you know, I had this fantasy of being cross legged in the lotus position, going um, <laughs> floating in this self development of enlightenment, right? So you know where i've come to today is very different from when i first started that journey of of a, what i see now as my goal or, a, or or an achievement is very very different to what i was then right mm. and and i think it's very something very important you said because you know that like that's kind of what the warrior by design everything i have is because that's what it is right that there's everyone you know I speak about the word warrior and why I chose the word warrior by design. I had a little bit, a little bit of a challenge with that in relation to the word. Why? Not because what I believed about it or my experience of it, because of the perceived, you know, you know, misconceptions that may be out there around that word, right? 
But that aside, I think what was interesting, what you said is that's truly my belief. That's, that's pretty much my foundation is that drive is within us to do anything. Now you think about, I certainly think about now from where I am, those 20 years of being that place of torment, struggle, not wanting to be here, how much energy and dedication, discipline it takes to stay in that place. You know, like in 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 that in that in that place of trauma is just as much energy, dedication, discipline to your beliefs, to your structure, to your who we are as a person, than there could, but then there is on the other side of using that for creation, for exploration, for that same energy exists. Now, thank goodness I came to a place of redirecting that energy to be able to challenge some of the things that I saw to be true and I th- saw to be my experience, right? Because I think about, you know, we kind of think in those times that it's easier just to stay in that place. We kind of think in that time, in, in that time of struggle, that time of torment that we, 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 bel- we perceive that it's just easier to, to be here, easier to stay here, easier to continue on that same, you know, momentum day in, day out. Oh my goodness. Can I look back at that and say how much I was kidding myself. There was so much more energy in doing what I was doing than challenging what I knew to be true, than mm. challenging my experiences, than challenging you know, my current beliefs at the time. Why they were difficult, and I'm not going to lie to you, they were they were difficult. There was a lot less energy moving through that stuff than there was living like that day to day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, totally. Totally. And we forget that, don't we? Because it's better the devil, you know, it's, you know, we're in that place and this is all I know. And we think being somewhere different or doing something different, is going to take a lot of energy, but most of the time it's just your one decision away. You, you, you know, you, yeah. you, you are literally one decision away. And once you make that choice and you need to make it for you, you can't make it for somebody else. You can't make it for your wife or for your children or for your husband. It's got to be for you. And once you do that, that decision, then it's, it's, you've done the hardest part that it takes so much energy to hold on to something that actually doesn't belong to you. Because there's yeah. negativity in that place of being actually it doesn't belong to you. That's why it's so hard to hold on to it because you're not supposed to be there. You know, we're holding on to it going, yeah, this is me. I'm supposed, you know, and once we decide, that's it. That's what we need. It's that initial decision. So I'm curious, right? Like when obviously you've had that decision, you've made, you, they, I'm guessing there was a point in your life where you made a decision. Was that when you saw your, when your wife basically said, I'm, I'm threatening to, to leave you. Was that the time where you went no more or was there another time? If I'm honest, I think there was, while I was spending so much energy in that place of trauma, there was also an aspect of me, right. That was almost like screaming at the hilts, like, let me out, let me out. You know, that was always trying to go down a different direction or was always at least trying to see that light through that, you know, through that, what seemed to be so, you know, tired of it and in a full on space. I think that there was always, there was multiple moments. I wouldn't say there was one, but there was mm-hmm. certain, like, there was, you know, I had an assistance dog at one point. I, you know, even being part of a bike club, though I look at it now, wasn't maybe one of my best decisions. It certainly helped me get to the next level. It prepared me for public speaking. It prepared me for so, because I was president at one stage and I had to speak in front of groups and I had no choice. And, you know, I had to do all these things. I think as crazy as it sounds, the, the build up from where I was, and I'll, I've got to be careful how to say this because I certainly don't want to be enabling people staying in that place. But I think certainly for me, everything I went through has led me to be the person I am today, right? And has led me to to have all the experiences I have today. Now, was there turning points? Yeah, definitely there was turning points. You know, turning point in in the instant of not wanting to kill myself. I decided not to kill myself, like on multiple occasions. Plenty of turning points there. You know, 
initially having my children to to stay stick around for that was a turning point you know that was something that it made me want to be a better me when it made me want to be a better version of me you know there was yeah definitely the turning point of my wife my like we did separate not long after me getting out in the army because i was just in you know again like i, I my ptsd and all the things that i was diagnosed with was was with me from getting back from east timor through my whole service right up until the point of me getting out right um, it didn't, it, it wasn't as apparent until I left the army because you know what? A lot of the people that I was around that I was in the, in the environment I was in were doing similar things, having different, similar experiences, you know? So it was almost a normal, a normality through in that, within that environment. But when I got out, you know, I, I quickly realized in civilian world, as we call it in civilian life, I'm not normal. <laughs> this isn't normal what I'm doing, what I'm experiencing, you know, because the people around me weren't doing the same things, weren't in that same place, weren't in that same environment. So I, that's when I really, like, though I was present there and I've had a lot of struggles inward, in, it was really apparent when I got out because I wasn't in the same environment. Mm, yeah. Isn't it quite fascinating how, <clears throat> how our environment really... Um, inspires us whether it's for better or worse to be who we are I mean when we're in an environment that might not necessarily be good for us you know we don't know any better do we it's not until we actually leave that environment and that that's the struggle with you know addiction that's the struggle with all these things because at the end of the day we're species that needs to connect to people and you know and whether it's positive or negative forms of connection it's still connection and we crave connection so we miss sometimes that what's not good for us or, or whatever it is until we step back or experience something different in our lives yeah and i think that's that's the ultimate thing isn't it until you have you're able to have another experience to compare to how what are you comparing to right you're in, you're comparing to other people's opinions other people's views of you or other people's opinions of you mm -hmm. or potentially even dreams that you may have that you see unachievable mm -hmm. that's what you're comparing to until you actually have another experience to be able to compare to your previous one well there's no real comparison is there to say what's what feels right or what feels better or what feels worse if you want to put it that way yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. So now, you know, being in the position you are now, <clears throat> you're well on your way to complete your master's of holistic counseling. I know that you're already, you've got a, you've already got a podcast. Um, what do you do? Tell me a bit about your podcast. What do you, what do you do? What's it about? Yeah. So look, as I say, touched on earlier, like it's called warrior by design. Now I chose the word warrior because that's, that's who I am. That's what I see my wife as, as, as a true warrior. What do I determine as the word warrior, that desire, that will to do something, that discipline, that, that, that drive, all that is what I call the true warrior, right? Something that allows us to keep moving forward, keep exploring and keep, that's what, that's what the warrior is to me, the warrior energy. Now, by design is about creating our own life, right? Creating our own future, creating our own reality, creating the experiences we want. What I do within the podcast is I, I try and explore, you know, some of the stuff that allowed me to potentially have a different view on things. I, I try and interview people like I've, we've spoken, Madeline, I'd love to have you on the show at some stage. I like, I, I try and interview people that have kind of been there and done it. And what my podcast is really about is cutting through all the, all the fantasy, the fluff and the, and, and all the amazing dream stuff as much as that is, is the goal and the end result. But how do we get there? How do we achieve that? Because I know a lot of the people that I've spoken to that I ha have would say a lot of people would see them as having success. They weren't born into it. That you know they had they had a lot of, a lot of their own struggles along the way, and and had their own experience. So for me, the podcast is about bringing back to reality, bringing back to humanity, and and showing how we can achieve these things through in a humane, realistic, and authentic way. Because one thing I've realized in this space, and there's no judgment in this, but there's just so much out there. And while there's a lot of marketing and media that's out there, and for good reasons as well, 
it's really hard to sometimes discern for ourselves what it is that is really right for us or what it is that we really want to do right and a lot of the stuff that's sold out there in the in the aspects of the marketing is and rightly so and i understand why is is the end end goal and the end result but what i want to do with my park podcast is really bring back and go well yeah why this this exists and it's true and it's possible and it's achievable there was bloody struggle and shit and everything that went through it to get to there. Mm. So it's okay that you're struggling. It's okay that you're having experiences in your life that may not be seem amazing. It's okay. As if you're moving forward and you're, and you're trying to do something different or have different experiences, it's okay. You know, like me saying, you know, the cross-legged, um, you know, lotus position of enlightenment. If I, cha- if I was, if I didn't come to a point of realizing that, one, that's not really my goal. It wasn't my goal. But two, it really doesn't matter that if, if that's the case, if I wasn't able to come to a place of my life, if I was really striving every ounce of my energy into that existence, I'd hate to think where I'd be going in my journey to be able to achieve that, right? And, and real, and because it was a fantasy I was chasing. Now, is there anything wrong with chasing dreams and fantasy? I don't think so. But as long as we have some realism and grounding along the way in, in, in what is, what's going to allow us to achieve those fantasies, achieve those dreams and achieve those goals. And that's what my podcast is about. Awesome. Yeah, great. I mean, it, it, I also, I, I totally agree with you there. Um, to be honest, I say it differently, but I, I guess it's quite, quite the same or quite similar is that the, it, the path is actually the goal. It, it, we, we seem to think that there's a goal in the future that we need to get to, that there's, there's this place or there's this destination that I need to get to. And the thing is, it, it is the actual path that is the goal. That's it. Like you're not going anywhere. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> this is your life. This is what you got. And yes, it's interesting to move towards something. Yes, it's it's awesome to be driven. I mean, I'm speaking to one driven person to another. Of course, we have that drive within us. But it it's almost it can it can almost be an existential goal where it's like I want to help mm. change the world. It's just a mindset. We can have mm. that, and and our path becomes you know, the goal to move towards it, to kind of step into the feeling of being that person every day, single, every single day of our lives. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's so important, right? Because let's be honest, it's the now that we want to have the good experiences, right? So it, like if, if we're to be, if we got to go to our impatience, we want to have the happiness now, we want to have the joy now, we want to have the all that beautiful now. Okay, well, if it's now that we want it, it's going to be now in the future too, right? That now. Mm. So if it's the now that we're seeking, well, okay. I kind of look at that and I think, well, then shouldn't this moment be the moment that I'm trying to make the best for me? And then therefore that allows me to create or get to the destination of what, and let's be honest, destinations evolve too, right? And change and Mm. adapt and move. So, but the now is definitely, you know, it's been said in so many different ways. And again, like, I think that's what I struggle with as well. There's so many definitions and, you know, acronyms and explanations. And, you know, while I believe in the fluff and the kittens and the rainbows, <laughs> I still want to, I still, it's this physical stuff, this, this stuff that I still want to be a part of. Right. And I still want this to be my experience and have, those experiences you know if with the fluff and the rainbows and the kittens if i can you know like and how do i achieve that well making my now the best i can through and finding what i need to do that in whatever way because there is that's the other thing i have to do with my podcast is i try and really bring it to people's awareness that my way is not the right way i'm no bloody guru no one's a guru like sorry like that's my opinion that's only an opinion but to me we're all our own guru right? We're, we're, we've all got to find what's right for us. And, you know, 90% of the stuff that I go on about could be waffle to one person, but that 1% could allow them to go on their own journey to be in a situation of their own place where they're doing the same thing for other people or for themselves or whatever. Mm. 
it's, that's what it's been for me as well, is really coming to that place of understanding that it's okay not to know everything, not to understand everything, mm. and not have all the answers. Mm. Oh, yeah. We will never, yeah, it's so true. Like, that's, we'll never get there. And like you said, I, same as you, I don't believe that there is anybody that's got any right answers for you in particular. It's just yourself. You know it. And it's, it's, yeah. you know, you're on the quest to figuring that out for yourself, just as everyone else, just like we all are on that quest. Um, and, you know, sometimes we can hear a message 10, 20, 30 times, and the 30, 31st time we'll hear it, it's like, oh, Oh, it's just it makes total sense to us and we've heard it so yeah. many times before and we're just ready for it you seem to be a person then that's got goals and, and ideas and visions and wanting to create things so have you got anything that you're working towards right now yeah i do so i've got a facebook group at the moment um i'm, I'm trying to form a little bit of community you know in a sense that just a, a supported community because again like I don't have all the answers, right? But what, I, what, what I'm trying to do within that group and that community is uh, there's a little bit of regulation in the sense that I don't want it to be, you know, just landing, landing pages for people's businesses and stuff like that. The posts that go on there are about what's helped you experience, you know, to ha have, have a shift, shift or a change in your life, you know, sharing that type of stuff. What, like what book did you read that had this aha moment or whatever that may be able to have the same for others? So that's something I'm working on, but I'm also mentoring coaching as well. And, you know, that's something that I'm really focusing on um, as well in the sense that when I say focusing on it, it's actually probably in a little bit of a back pedal. The community is probably my, my forefront at the moment. Um, and getting that support happening but the mentoring and coaching is something I'm, I'm it's always there it's always available it's always an option what I've realized for myself with the marketing aspect of things and time will tell how it goes is I've really got to a point where I just wanted to I just want to be as authentic as possible for myself and if people can find some value and may see that they can get some support from that then um I, I, I encourage people to reach out. Mm. Wonderful. Yeah. So, so you're, you're, you're coaching and supporting people at the moment. So if anyone's drawn to working with you, how can they find you? How can they connect with you? Yeah. So if you look up warrior by design on, I'm on Instagram on warrior by design on, um, on Facebook as well as Facebook group. Um, Benjamin John is my Facebook page as well. Also, uh, www.warriorbydesign.com.au uh, is my website that is will be up and uh, it's going to be up and running. Um, and yeah, so this look, I'm, I'm pretty much on every platform other than Twitter and Snapchat. So um, if you just look up Benjamin John or, or Warrior by Design, I'm there. Same for my podcast on Spotify and um, Apple Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but warrior by design is the big one great awesome that's really good um so i mean am i right in saying like your main um people that you're supporting is is mainly uh men or is it both yeah look i am i'm i'm really driven to work with men at, at you know at this stage um but i am working with a lot of women too um so it's definitely not a one-sided thing but my focus is probably wanting to support in the area of you know what i would call the masculinity just men you know and and allowing men to understand or find come to an understanding for themselves what it means for them to be a you know a, a true man mm. Mm. yeah great and and to and honestly like that, that i find that there's a lot of support or more support for women uh in this field of self-development at the moment um there seems to be less support for men i don't know if that's correct that's obviously my, been my experience, experience. yeah uh it's been your experience too and I've, I've heard it from other people as well and and you know there's there's a lot of men uh, that needs this form of support too and uh i mean they have their own personal issues of why i mean a man shouldn't ask for help there's all these rubbish mm. beliefs things that we've been told as children they have the same as women do um and like you said sometimes a woman can need to work with her masculine energy 
which also means that she would be able to work with someone like you because that's what you're about. It's honing in on that masculine warrior. Uh, and we all have that, no matter if we're a woman or a man. So I think you're really onto something there and it's something that's really needed um, in the world. Is that, is that your experience? Yeah, look, I think it is. What, what I think my major drive is, is really bringing the masculinity from my experience back back to its originality, right? And, you know, I think a lot of a lot of women are trying to do that within the femininity as well, you know, and it's about the meshing of the two, right? So that warrior is within all of us, feminine and masculine. The the way we express that, the way, the way we, you know, move and weave with that is going to be different between the masculine and the feminine, though that drive, that passion and, and that desire is within both, right? Yeah. So what for me is I'm really wanting to try and bring that masculinity a lot a lot closer to to be in in you know in in twine with the feminine now we talk about feminine masculinity in the day let's just be equal right let's bring that equal balance back in you know let's bring the balance back into where there is no real dif differentiation it's it's just a it's gonna it's more of a which do you want to create with right which which way do you want to create how do you want to create in this saying in this area or this area and and it, the, when we're able to have that balance within ourselves you know for me to say that i have femininity coming from a special forces background and all that sort of stuff like oh my goodness you know for someone to be able to say that you know that you could even say that you had femininity within you would be so amusing right you know especially when you know even the bike clubs and bike spaces and all that sort of stuff like so masculine mm. But I've found my true power, my true masculinity of who I am as a male in this physical body, balancing the two. Yes. Right? And that's where I've really found my true strength. Like someone who was, had the mask of being a president in a bike club and being so masculine and had the mask of being in the special forces unit, how, you know, being so tough and masculine within that space, I now say the more I touch into my femininity, I can I can hold that masculinity a lot better. Love that. And that's so true because you know there's so many different shades of both sides of that masculine and feminine. And some people need to actually lean more towards bringing in that feminine energy because we have a screwy idea of masculinity and what that means. Um, so that's great. It's fascinating, fascinating subject. Um, and, uh, you know, I can even see workshops and, and um, seminars, things like that. Is that something that you've been thinking about? Yeah, it is. It's there? definitely in the pipeline. I've, mm. I've um, moved to a space here with 40 acres. Um, you know, there's some interesting things happening in the background. So I don't know where that, you know, exactly that's going to go. Obviously, the things happening around the world at the moment. But um, yeah, that's definitely within the pipeline. And courses are developed in the background um it's just a matter of the right timing yeah absolutely well mm. you, it seems like you got your hands full i mean you're you're still studying i mean you're still certified in certain areas so you're still working you're still it's great to see that you're already working on your business you're already doing your podcast you've already got clients you know you're already on your way so when you're finished you know that's just you know, take one step in front foot one foot in the front of the other and you you know you'll be able to create something amazing congratulations so far it's really it's really awesome to see you doing so well and um maybe we'll connect again in the future and see how you're going <laughs> yeah it sounds amazing thank you ben thank you Hi. Hi.